Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert, the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here from Mere Leather Cow Studios in the Dirty Dirty. And I would like to welcome everybody in. Thank you guys for following. Thank you guys for subscribing and clicking that bell so every time that I do these videos, you guys will get a message, a bell, a ding, or something, however your phone is set up to let you know that, hey, I have dropped some more jewels and information in this leather craft world to make you guys, you guys, to make your lives easier as a crafter and to help you get better along the way. Now today, uh, today's video is about uh, wallet inserts. And you can pretty much use these techniques and skills uh, in any type of wallet that you make, be it a bifold, trifold, uh, trucker's wallet, banker's wallet, long wallet. There are several names of how you want to do this. But a bifold is one that folds one time. I know you guys are smart enough to know that. Trifold folds three times. And the long wallets, trucker wallets, banker's wallets, all of those are the same ones, the long ones that go into the back pocket. But um, on this particular project, um, a lot of times crafters, especially you guys who are just starting out, don't have a lot of the money to keep buying the kits and buy, you know, other things and stuff like that. Now, when I first started out, let me drop this. When I first started out, I was buying the kits and you guys, um, what I was doing was I was tra tracing the pattern of the kit that, that uh, the, the leather templates that came in the kit. I was tracing those out. And then that way I always had a pattern to go off of. Now that is one avenue how you can stretch Stretch your money as a beginner crafter, intermediate crafter, some of you old school guys, you guys are doing the same thing what I'm doing, I make my own inserts. And there are a lot of times the, that if you don't, when you want to do the intermediate crafters, you want to make your own back piece of the wallet and you don't know how to make the inserts, the pockets, the driver's license pockets and all of that stuff and the, the, the interior part of the wallet. So you'll spend that extra money to buy the pre-made inserts. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with that at all. But as you progress in your craft, you, uh, especially me, let me say me, I want to make everything in that wallet with these two hands. I want it to come out of this mind and create out of these two hands to, so uh, when a customer or a client purchases a wallet from me, everything is custom made custom made generally uh let me give you just some inf quick information right quick generally in a bifold you have anywhere from five to six pockets uh same thing for the trifolds you have two pockets on each uh panel of that wallet that's folding and then that's still including uh not not, not including where you put your cash at and then sometimes you can put a split um uh piece into that uh wallet that's totally up to the crafters that's the crafters choice or the customer's choice if they want to have that divider inside of the cash part where you got a front uh front part and then you have the divider and then you have a back part totally up to you some wallets i've even made that have a hideaway flap um let me grab one real quick actually the one that i'm working on um sometimes i put place a hideaway flap in so when I actually sew the interior part of this wallet in, I'll make just one flap that'll probably come down maybe a half inch from the bottom. So I call it a hideaway flap. Sometimes you guys are out there married and then your wife is always going inside of your wallet. But if you raise that, what that hideaway flap up, that's most men's secret stash. And so, uh, uh, if your wife goes in or your girlfriend's significant other, whatever, she goes in and say, well, hey, baby, let me get five or ten, twenty dollars. And then she'll go in there. Oh, yeah, go ahead and get it. But then up under that hideaway flap is our secret. You know, some some cases your beer money. You know, I don't drink anymore. But, you know, that's why I would have put my, my, my beer money. But um, it is totally up to the crafters or it's up to the customers. That's just an extra option if you want to give that to your customers or clients. You can ask them do they want that hideaway flap or if they want that uh, secondary divider inside of where the bill is. But 
this part of the video what i want to talk to you guys about actually let me show you the exterior part this is all the exterior part i have the uh basket weave and the oak leaves and the deer head i have this um actually it's getting a resist finish on there so i already have my resin lane already on there so i'm waiting for that to dry but let's get to the interior part now this is something that i have changed in a lot of my wallets. I just recently started doing this. And this is the back panel of the interior part. But if you see this slot right here, this slot is actually can be opened up and the bills will be placed inside of this part. So the bills of uh, the currency will actually go right in between that back panel and the exterior part of your wallet. Now, to me, it was just a little creative thing. I, I saw another crafter do it on Pinterest. I think that's how they laid theirs out. And uh, it was just something that I thought was neat. Plus, it saves you from actually sewing an interior, uh, uh, whether you're using pig lining or pebble grain lining or whatever lining, it saves you from actually making the wallet so thick so you eliminate one interior piece strictly by going this way. Now, uh, if you don't want that flesh side to look a little rough, now this is actually a uh, two ounce milled, um, bed, uh, two ounce meal veg tan. So it's kind of soft, you guys, that's why you see it a little floppy. But anyway, if you don't want that rough side, the flesh side to actually have that rough look, all you do is take your gum track and you put that on there and then you just slick that down with your edge slicker and then it'll have that slick back finish if that's what you want to do. That's just what Cowboy does right here at Premier Leather Crafters. But now uh, the interior, get to the interior part of the wallet. And I'm going to tell you guys how I make my pockets. And then I'll show you how I lay those pockets out and sew those into uh, inside of the interior part of that uh, so it's nice and uniform and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to make a piece look nice. This is regular poster paper, guys. Nothing fancy about it. And what I did, I just trimmed out my, uh, these are my top two pockets. And you guys can take this shape, pretty much see how that, this is, this is drawn out. And I'm going to leave that, this line right here is my stitch line. So I wanted to simulate where I was going to put my stitch line at because I'm going to sew this in. But if you guys can see that, this is all that an interior pocket is. The top two pockets, the interior, uh, that's all that it is. And you can angle these, these corners, you can angle that whatever best suits you. But let me show you real quick with a card of how I laid this out. If I can find one, there we go. So I want that card or, the, or whatever the client has, I want that card to stick up probably about an eighth of an inch. That's all I wanted to stick up about an eighth of an inch. Now I'm going to turn this around. Now this is how deep, remember when I draw that stitch line right there? This is where the card is going to sit on top of that stitch, that stitching, and it still has enough for it if they want to go into the wallet and they can pull the card out. Now that is very key right there. So when, you tra uh, when you're trimming out or tracing these out, draw them out on a poster board or any type of interior cardboard. You guys have seen another video I've done where I showed you that you have material inside your house that you can use instead of buying poster paper. Get the cereal box. Get the mashed potato, the instant mashed potato box. Get the cracker box. Anything that you can trace and draw out a template on. And then you just cover this with cellophane tape and you can use this pattern over and over again. There'll be another video where I'll show you how you can be a little bit creative and just don't have, you don't just have necessarily have to have a straight edge, but that's another video. So now I know I want six pockets into this wallet. So I cut out a secondary piece. This is two. You guys can see that top wallet or uh, top pocket, second pocket, and then it'll go down in here. The same way we use the same measurements off of that to where you guys can see that same setup, nothing fancy snatchy about it, same setup. And uh, when, I, when you put this together, you want these edges to be flush with each other. I'll tell you, we'll get to that part in a minute. But 
You can also see where the card, it doesn't matter about these two pockets if the card sticks out because we're going to cover all of that up anyway. These two, we're going to cover up this piece anyway with um, the third pocket, which is uh, actually it's just a square, a regular rectangle. You can measure these uh, based on the card that you use. And I just went a, a little bit longer than the card. There's no rocket science involved in this, guys. There's no rocket science, just a little bit of creativity. So these are my three pockets here. And everything lines up flush. You want to make sure that everything lines up flush on both ends. And see, now, with this bottom pocket here, it hides the angles of the two top pockets like this. All of this is hidden. Now, once you get this far into your piece, now I actually started sewing one already and then I stopped and said, hey, this would be a cool video. But you can see right here where I already have it set up and I dropped this down uh, maybe at another eighth, probably not even an eighth, maybe a, a what would that be? The first tick is, uh, well, if, you, if you're on your measuring tape, I just drop that down to that first mark past the one inch. Uh, so if that's a quarter, then yeah, that is an eighth. So I just drop that down an eighth from where my bill slot is. And then we went ahead and tacked that down with contact cement. And then I punched my holes through my stitch line and I sewn that, sewed that already into my back panel piece. So now I'm gonna come right back and I'm going to put my secondary pocket right on top of that and line everything up. Make sure it's all lined up and then I'm gonna contact cement this second pocket down and you guys can barely, you might can barely see that, but this is my stitch line right here and once I contact cement this down, I'm going to punch my stitching holes and sew this part up. Now, I'm going to save a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and prep this with the contact cement and stitch this in there on the stitch pony. Uh, please, guys, you guys know that I've, I've already done a video on the stitching pony, so you can go back into the, uh, the library and find that stitch pony. Uh, how to make one. This only cost me, uh, I think, seven or eight bucks. I can't remember really, but you can make these on your own. Just go to your local lumber store. This is just one by four, one by four. And I bought a four, uh, actually I bought a six foot board of one by four, put the stitch upon it together. But projects like this, and this is why I'm telling you about this, projects like uh, with sewing wallets where you need both of your hands to do the saddle stitch, your stitch pony is vital. You don't have to go out and spend $30, $40. You guys know me by now. You followed me long enough to know. Save your money on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end with pieces and work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop this video real quick. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this prepped up with the contact cement. Get this set and go ahead and punch punch in my stitching uh, holes and then I'll come right back and then show you guys a very another drum I'll drop another jewel about stitching these uh, pockets in where you don't have to do a whole lot of back stitching. Now I know the golden rule is you want to start your stitch out in the first three holes then back up and then keep on going forward and then once you get to the end you want to back stitch three four more holes just to make sure it's secure but I'm going to I'm going to show you guys an easier way and it's going to give you the same effect. So if the effect is the same, the process doesn't really matter. So I'll see you guys in a short bit. Okay, and we're back. All right, I have already placed the second pocket in, and I've already punched my interior holes. Uh, I know it seems like I just stopped it and just started but you know you do have to give your contact cement time if you guys are using the contact cement you know you have to give it time to get tacky so actually it's been probably about maybe four or five minutes but anyway you want to punch your holes go ahead and punch your holes and you want to tack these edges down too as well so it'll hold and set in place 
and then go ahead and punch the stitcher holes. Now, here's the jewel that I'm gonna drop for you guys. If you can see this, you see that I punched an extra hole off of the uh, pocket. This is going to allow me to, when I start stitching, is going to actually anchor in those edges. Now, is there a rule to say how far you can go out? So if you're comfortable with doing two, you can do two, but basically you're just stitching into one piece. But to make those, to make these edges really anchor down, I just punch one hole into that. Now, am I still going to backstitch it? Yes, I'm going to backstitch it, but instead of backstitching back into the pocket, two to three holes, I'm only going to backstitch into the pocket one uh, hole, maybe two. But usually when you backstitch, you want to backstitch about three to four holes so that it makes sure you hold these corners down. But if you just move your punch over one time, you'll actually get that hole on both the edge and that'll anchor it down. Now, let me drop this other jewel in here real quick. You guys, for these pockets to work and for the wallet to stay flat and everything tapered, you need to invest in you a skiver. This keeps the pockets of the wallet from being so blocky and bulky. So when the customer or the client puts the wallet in, it don't feel like they're sitting lopsided. You know, I wish you guys could see that, but it don't feel like you're lopsided because your wallet is so thick. Now, when I first started out, I did make that mistake by not skiving down the edges of my pockets. Even on that last pocket, you want to skive down those edges and in the finished part of the product, after you get it all sewn and put together, then it's actually going to make, now just keep in mind, now I have four layers of leather here. Now when I put my second, my exterior piece, I have five layers. So to keep this all tapered and nice and neat and professional, you want to taper, uh, you want to sky down uh, each layer of these, of the inside part of the wallet. You want to take, take and sky that down just a little bit. Now I'm using, again, I'm using two ounce milled, so you don't want to sky too much, but you do want to make sure that you have a sharp blade in there so you can actually just take that edge off with one swipe. And I guess you guys can see that. You can see where I went in about a quarter inch just to sky that down. And it's gonna taper all of these layers off. So, and that's also gonna help you in your burnishing process. When you burnish that, it's gonna be all nice, clean, and flush. Okay, let's get to stitching this. I'm gonna turn the camera back over here and angle this down a little bit. And I'll show you guys how we're gonna stitch this in. Uh, I'm pretty sure you already know how to saddle stitch, but I have about maybe 10 inches of lace, of, of wax thread, and I'm going right into that opening hole and pull this up even, and that's enough for me to stitch all the way through my piece, and it's giving me enough to anchor, uh, anchor those corners down to where they won't have to come back up again. Especially when the client or the customer starts putting in his cards, uh, the, the wallet will actually start um, uh, spreading a little bit. So you wanna make sure that all of that's done. Now, one thing I, I can tell you guys, and this will probably be in another video when I do about saddle stitching, depending on the leather or the type, the thickness of the leather that you're using, you don't want to pull these stitches, your, 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 your wax thread, so tight that it causes a wrinkle in your leather, especially when you're working with this meal leather because it's so soft. You don't want to pull these so tight that it causes a wrinkle, but you do want to snug them up because actually, and honestly, the contact cement will hold it for a while. It will hold it for a while before it starts to give way, depending on how far they're jamming their cards in there. But the stitching is basically there as an accessory. So it, it, it's kind of like the, the, the perfect tie to a good suit. You know, uh, 
the soup looks good by itself, but when you put that tie with it, wow, you know, then that's that's when you rock it and roll it. Maybe sometimes it's just you, you just need something just to just to make it go right over the top. But that's exactly what what you're threading is, uh, especially when you're working with contact cement. Now, again, I use Wellwood um, contact cement. So you make sure that you want to spread that pretty thin and kind of keep it uniform. Uh, another good jewel to use, and I'll show you guys because I have one laid out here real quick. When you're doing the interior pockets and you don't want to spread it too far with the brush, popsicle sticks. You can get a box of these, uh, I think a box of a hundred at Dollar Tree. And all you do is just dip that popsicle stick in there and then you just hit that corner, the only, just the part that you sky the back and you can get it nice and thin and it doesn't have an overspread when you uh, put your pieces together. So just be mindful of that. You can take popsicle sticks. That's a little old, a little hidden it ain't, it's not hidden. A lot of crafters know about it. They just don't want to tell a lot of folks about it. But if you guys have used um, even the, the leather whale that you buy from your local uh, leather craft store, that stuff comes out in a nice little bead. And then by the time you use your finger to spread it out a little bit, that's waste. So now you just wasted a lot of contact cement that you could have used on another project. But just invest in your popsicle stick. Or if you want to, get you some nice little cheap brushes from Harbor Freight or Walmart or someplace like that. And that's all that you use them for is just to spread your contact cement. It's, and that, that applies to any project, even on belts or purses. Because if you spread that stuff too thick, and then when you bond your two pieces together, then you have, a, a, it starts to ooze out. And when it starts to ooze, it oozing out, especially when you're almost finished with a project. Nothing irks me more than when I have, I'm almost at the finish line and uh, uh, some contact cement starts to ooze out a little bit. That gets on my nerves, man. But anywho, and we just running the back stitch back. And all I did uh, back stitch was two, two holes onto the edge of that pocket. And then we're going to pull that out. Now, here's another trick, you guys. Um, not a trick, but another jewel. And let me get this out of my stitcher pony. When you have your overhang on your thread, and let me tell you something. When you have this overhang on your thread, a lot of times uh, earlier in, in, in my crafting, I used to tie that off and then burn it. Now here's the problem and the issue with that. When you tie it off in a knot, and then you put that that uh, your lighter or your heat to it, it balls up that wax thread and it leaves a bump into your work. That's uh, the difference between a professional piece and a beginner's piece. So what you wanna do, still cut these ends off, Leave that just like it is. I guess you guys can see that. Yeah, there you go. You can see that. And then I'm going to do is take my lighter and let that melt back. And I'm going to blow that and then mash it flat. That's all. No bump, ladies and gentlemen. No bump at all, period. Now, hey, now you guys know how I put my stitches together. I want, I mean, my interior pockets together. I won't bore you with watching me finish this all the way off, but if you guys go to my social media pages, Premier Leather Crafters uh, on Facebook, um, Cowboy PLC on Instagram, uh, so and you can see the finished product there. Uh, most likely, I'll have it shipped out to the customer, and the customer will have it, so they'll get it. They'll see it before you guys do, but you can also go into the pages and see the finished product. Um, from there, even the interior parts of the wallet, and you can see how it's going to look, how it's pulled all together, all uniform. Oh, let me drop this tidbit. Before you put your pockets in, go ahead and edge coat the top parts of your pocket. Edge coat the top parts of your pocket. I did make that mistake uh, to where the um, 
I went back and tried to separate the pocket and then edge coat it with a Q-tip and then some of the edge coat got onto the leather. Ah, again, at the finish line and it's a uh-oh. So to keep from doing the uh-oh and before you sew it into the wallet, go ahead and edge coat that and then you can go ahead and finish uh, stitching your, your pockets into your inside in there. Hey guys, I thank you guys for chilling with me. This video went a little bit longer, but I just wanted to give you that little bit of information. You can make the entire wallet instead of buying all of the inserts and the kits and all of that stuff. You guys can make your own kit or your own templates and it'll save you a lot of money. The, the American, American currency especially is only three by six, three inches wide and six inches long. Now, don't, don't, don't trip, you know, I just had a hondo laying around, but it's uh, 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 six inches long. So all you're going to do is extend your wallet a half inch all the way around. That's your template. Make you a rectangular shaped wallet by fold. And then now I would encourage you guys to get you some edge, I mean some corner rounders. You can get these off of Amazon. So it doesn't have to be so rectangular. Just go ahead and get you some of uh, these rounders off of Amazon. This is seven different sizes and I paid six bucks for these, $6.99 for these. As a Prime member, you get free shipping. So, and you can take these edge rounders and just lop those corners off the same way I did, round those corners off. So when I braid this, now my leather braiding is all uniform all the way around. That's just an extra jewel right there. Hey, I'm gonna get out of here, get back to work, get this sewn up, get it put together, and uh, put another coat of the, the uh, Resoline on there and get this thing shipped out to the customer probably in the next couple of days. Thank you guys for chilling with me. Hey, if you like this video and you like what I'm giving you, uh, uh, like what I'm helping you, I'm just trying to help keep the culture going. Regardless of what anybody says, this leather industry is a culture. You really have to love, have a love for creativity and working with your hands to be in this. But you can make a lot of money. But if you like the videos and you like what I'm giving you, uh, sharing with you, uh, hey, hit the subscribe button and, and hit, the, hit that little bell so every time I do these videos, you'll get a notification. And then also share it. Hey, I do not mind. I don't know everything. Uh, but after 27 years of the business, I decided, to, hey, look, I'm just going to share this out there because we're getting new crafters every week. Uh, the deals and the cases, all that stuff. Hey, you guys keep crafting, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.